Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Egret 2 Mini. So this mini console joins with some of the others I have in my collection. I'm showing you them here for size purposes. But yeah, in the last couple of years, we've been getting a lot of these really cool arcade mini consoles. And this one is very unique in a couple different ways. But before we get started, I do wanna say that this was sent to me for review. However, all of the opinions are my own. Now there is a lot to cover with this, but let's go ahead and start with some of the features. And the big feature with this one is this five inch rotating monitor. And you can see me using it here. So basically you push in and it pops out and then you can rotate it either horizontal or vertical depending on the game that you're playing. And this feels really good, really solid. I mean, when you play those vertical shooters, you're gonna wanna tilt that monitor vertically, you know, have that alignment. It's just, it's just so awesome. And you can do it at any time. It's almost like an iPad where you push in, it pops out, you rotate it and then you push it back in and then it instantly reconfigures both the main menu as well as the game that you're playing. And so it's definitely a very cool feature. And honestly, any other mini console that comes out that doesn't have this is gonna be compared to this. I mean, this is gonna be the standard for doing this now on. I mean, it's again, it's, it's, it's really cool. But let's go ahead and walk around some of the other features here. So up above there, you have two stereo speakers and they're pretty loud. They sound pretty good. Looking at the controls, you've got that joystick right there and it feels really good actually. It's got a nice weight to it. It's got micro switches in there and it has this really interesting feature where you can lock it to either four directions or eight directions. There's a little dial on the bottom of the unit where you can configure that. And before you launch each game, it tells you which configuration of that joystick that you probably should put it into. You don't have to, but it'll tell you which, you know, which one the game is designed for. You have those little three buttons right there. One of them is a coin insert. The other one is a player start. And then that one right there will bring up the main menu in a game. So you can do save states and also you can go back to the main menu as well as the six main buttons right there. And again, when you launch a game, it will tell you exactly which button is configured to do what, which again is really nice. You don't have to look it up. You don't have to guess. It's always right there. And they feel pretty good. They're nice and springy. And yeah, I mean, I dig them. Moving around to the back, you have an on off switch. You have player one and player two USB ports. And we're gonna test those out in a bit here. You have a full size HDMI port and that is outputting 720p to your television. You have the headphone jack and then right next to that you have the USB-C power. And that's where things get a little interesting with this. You see, when I first fired this up and started messing around with it, it was crashing and locking up all the time. Like, even at the main menu, it would just lock up or in a game after just maybe a minute or two, it would lock up. And I was like, really surprised. I thought maybe my, my unit was defective or something like that. I was gonna have to send it back. And then I reached out to some friends and discovered that, well, not all USB power bricks are, are the same, that output the same amount of power. And so despite the fact that this does not ship with one, it just comes with the cable, not the power brick, it doesn't work with all of them on the market. And so I actually had to stop using the one I've been using with my Switch for years and use this other one right here and suddenly it started working. So. I guess this is a known issue with these things that depending on the power brick that you use, you may get either really poor performance or lockups. So that is a huge oversight in my opinion. If it's that sensitive, they should have included one in the box. But once I did switch, everything started working fine. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, the cool thing about this is that it comes with 40 games pre-installed on it, and then you can get an additional 10 if you get the optional SD card and also controller. And again, I'm gonna show that here in a bit. And, you know, the selection of games, actually, I like quite a bit. There's a little of everything on here. And the ability to rotate the monitor, 
never got old. I think this is just so cool. I can't overstate how awesome this is. And so out of the box, I was having a lot of fun with this. And like I said, other than the power issue, I don't really have any complaints about this whatsoever. I think it's pretty cool. But they did send two other accessories. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is this gamepad here. So you're really only gonna use this probably if you are playing on your big screen television. I mean, you can use it with just the the mini console itself. But, you know, for the most part, I think, you know, people would just have this sitting on a coffee table and then kicking back with the controller. And it's 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 nice to, to hold. Actually, it's a nice size. Uh, it's got a little bit of a, of a grip, you know, underneath it there. The buttons feel okay. Thing is that D-pad, I don't love it. Uh, I'm not... I'm not in love with it. I think it's just okay. So just be aware, it's probably not my favorite. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the trackball and paddle controller. So this comes with 10 additional games specifically designed for this controller. And the way that you get access to them, you just pop this SD card in the side there, restart the unit and they just pop up. And this is where things get kind of interesting because, well, as you see here, I'm playing bowling with the trackball and it actually feels pretty good, you know? It's not full size, you know? It's not quite as heavy as you would get in the arcade, but for a mini console, actually, I was having a lot of fun with it. And then check out this paddle. So this paddle, you can really spin it. It actually has a little bit of resistance or weight to it. So you can really just whip that thing and just go. And initially I thought, okay, this is gonna be pretty cool. I actually really like paddle games. I've been playing them in arcades for years. I also played them on my Atari 2600. But I gotta be honest with you is that as I was playing Arkanoid, I was I was having problems with the paddle. It's It's got that resistance to it. It's got that weight to it. And I'm not in love with it. It's kind of weird. I'd love to open it up and kind of see how it's working because it, it kind of feels almost magnetic, almost a little bit sticky at times. And so I was actually doing pretty poorly in Arkanoid. That's a game I played a lot. And it was just something about the resistance or the weight to it was kind of throwing me off my game, literally. And so I don't know if this is something I would just need to get used to. I'm not entirely sure, but I wasn't loving it as much as I expected to. But that said, it's definitely better using that paddle than trying to use, you know, like the, the thumbstick or the a controller or something like that. But overall, I do like it. I mean, there's a ton of games pre-installed on it and across many different genres. So, you know, you can just put it on your desk at work and have this little machine there that you can fire up and, you know, play for a couple minutes and have a good time. But it does come at a cost. This thing is not cheap. Uh, as far as I can tell, it starts if you just want to get the mini console itself and no other controllers. It looks like the price online is currently about $200, but then there are many different bundles depending on what you want to you know, get with it. So if you want the other controllers, it looks like it can go from 300 to you know over $400. So again, not a inexpensive mini console for sure. But I know a lot of people were looking forward to this. And again, once you work out the whole power issue, you should be good to go. And like I said, that rotating screen, yeah, that's just killer. But I would love to know what you think down in the comments below. Are you planning on pre-ordering one of these? Let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.